just land? Uh, we landed in uh, Hartford. Hartford, Connecticut. We're in Hartford, Connecticut, and uh, it is snowing. I think it's like less than 30 degrees out right now. It's probably about 16. 16 degrees. So we are, uh, I'm a little out of my element here, but John, I was made for this, I'm like a polar bear. Look at all that snow. That is snow. Not happening in Florida for sure. We got here to the hotel. I was reading Samuel Rutherford's letters on the plane. <laughs> Listen to this. He says, may I feed on Christ's breathings. May I feed on Christ's breathings. Literally receiving brand new life from the mouth of Christ that satisfies the soul every day. This is key. That's why I love reading people like Samuel Rutherford who emphasizes communion with God above all things. So it's the morning of the School of His Presence here in Massachusetts. I felt this morning uh, probably the greatest definition of waiting on the Lord is in Psalm 25. He actually says in verse 5, For you I wait all the day. But he connects his waiting to being led, being taught, and being given the ability to know, like the Lord installing something. But even these things, the waiting and the recognition of his uh, teaching, his leading, his, his making known the way, are connected to the first verse, which is, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. It is a person to you, not to his things. To you, O Lord, that's the ruler of your life. I submit my life to your person. I, I, no one else can do this for me. I've got to do this. What? Lift up. This is release unto him. My soul, my mind, my will, my emotions. I let go of what I want. I let go of what I in and of myself feel. And I let go of what I want up to you that I might receive your quickened will, your spiritual feelings, and your mind. Yeah, so I was just looking at this today and I thought, what an, what an amazing way to define waiting. And waiting is connected here in verse two. Oh my God, I, in you I trust. Waiting is an expression of trust. So to you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. For you I wait all the day. So I just encourage you to wait on the Lord, take time to just give exclusive attention to Him, to Him, and let your heart go up to Him. Lift up your soul to Him and remain in this place. And He will lead you and He will cause you to experience His salvation. Blessings to you. We are about to go to the, uh, the venue now. We've arrived here, Breakthrough Worship Center. With my boy John. Yes, sir. This is a, looks like a house. Yeah, it used to be a mansion. It used to be a mansion. So I'm here at Breakthrough Worship Center, and Pastor's with me. How was it today? It was very wonderful. It was so easy and it was so beautiful. We just, we were so touched by the Lord in a unique, fresh way. Amazing, thank you. <laughs> Praise God. Bro, I love this whole setup here. Bro, how'd the school go today? Incredible. Nate, Je tell me something about it. Jesus was loved and adored and people experienced the deliverance from dead works to rest in serving the living God. <laughs> did, it sense, did you feel like it was easy? Yes, it was the easiest that I've ever seen a school. Oh, praise God. So I'm back in the room now and it was a tremendous day today. And uh, I would say that what God spoke to my heart today was a fresh understanding that unless we come on the basis of Jesus Christ, there is no experience of God. Uh, some people had questions today about why, you know, they struggle in prayer. And my personal conviction is that struggle in prayer is in exact proportion to us coming to God on the basis of something other than the perfections of the person of Jesus Christ, the perfections 
of his work. It is by faith we receive the Spirit. As Galatians 3.14 tells us, we receive the promise of the Spirit by faith, and that faith is in the perfect work of Jesus Christ. So I encourage you, if you're going to <laughs> enjoy the wonderful riches of Jesus Christ in fellowship, you can only come by Jesus Christ, faith in his work. Bless you guys.